07 everybody it's wingling dragon here uh, so you just got yourself maybe a joystick or a console controller and you're curious about some sensitivity settings as well as non-linearity non-linearity what's the difference between the two uh, what settings do I use and why I'm hoping that I can explain to you guys uh, how the settings actually work and I hope that leads you to be able to uh, come up with your own numbers because here's the thing about it and one of the reasons why I've hesitated to make a video like this for so long despite it being one of a, a very popular question is my settings may not necessarily work for you and your settings may not necessarily work for me uh, this is something that may evolve with time and ebb and flow as you gain experience or just experience stagnancy within, within the mode before we get into it, just to help keep me on task and on pace, I'm going to be playing a song here in the background by my good friend Skain, who is not only a talented pilot, but also a very capable uh, composer of music. And uh, we're going to be playing his song Gray Area here in the background. He's given me permission to use his uh, library of music, uh, you know, royalty free on the streams here. So this is going to be take number one. So Skain, thank you very much. Big shout out for you. And we'll be putting his link in the... Uh, in the description of the video. So let's just jump right into it guys. I've got War Thunder pulled up here and I got my aircraft floating in the water and I'm gonna go ahead and move my rudder off to the right and you can see that at the bottom of the screen with the red bar. That red bar at the bottom of the screen is my rudder moving in real life. So if I do this you can see that even though my physical rudders are moving completely from one side to the next my virtual rudder is not quite making it all the way. So every aircraft has a little bit of a, a lag time when it comes to controls. Normally the smaller the control surface, like such, on, like such as uh, fighters will have smaller rudders, the more rapidly those rudders will be able to fully deflect. And something large like this, a bomber, you know, it may naturally move a little bit slower, but this is all related to your sensitivity. So let's go right into the controls and take a look at it. When you come in here to your uh, movement controls, you'll see three glaring control sensitivities that this is the number one thing that I get asked about what sensitivity should I be using now if you're just starting sim I'm gonna make this real simple for you 75% 50% and 25% now this is not these are not numbers that you should be married to this is just a really good place to start from and your goal should be to try to get back to 100% but you don't want to do it over time or, or you don't want to do it all at once, you want to do it over time. Now, 75% for the roll, 50% for the pitch, and 25% for the yaw. Let's see how that corresponds to that same rudder movement. See how much slower my rudder is moving from left to right now. And what that does is that basically forces you to have this artificial sense of smoothness. So if you're struggling to get your sight on target, if you're struggling, if your aircraft feels like it's jittering all over the place, lowering these sensitivities can basically force you to be smooth even though you may be kind of bouncing all over the place you know within the actual with the physical controls in real life and the idea here is that every day that you play war thunder you would raise these percentage values by one percent at a time so you'd go from 75 to 76 from 50 to 51 and from 25 to 26 and you'd save the new settings and then you'd play your entire day on these new settings. Then the next day you come in, you'd go to 77 and 52, and then finally to 27. And you'd do that every day that you play the game until you get all three settings back up to 100%. At which point, you are fully optimized and fully like in tune with your aircraft. Now, if you notice that you start to move those sensitivities up past a certain point, Maybe you get to like the 80% mark and you notice that you start missing targets more often and you're having trouble getting that sight onto its, its destination. Then maybe just chuck those you know, percentage points back a few bits you know, until you get back to that spot where you were doing kind of well. And, and then just kind of hover there for a little while. Nothing says that you need to get to 100% instantaneously. And here's the other thing. Nothing says that you need to get to 100%. If you want to try lowering this, I know a lot of talented pilots who are capable of defeating me in combat, who play on 0% for all three control sensitivities. And that forces your controls to be ultra smooth. I'm deflecting all of my controls as rapidly as possible in the, in the physical realm, but in the virtual realm, you can see just how slowly all of my control surfaces are moving. If you're doing like energy fighting or long range sniping or anything like that, having extremely low sensitivities uh, can really help smooth out your flight. Now. 
that sensitivity. So again, 75, 50, and, and 25%, and then work those up over time. The one thing is, having a lower sensitivity will help you on offense, but it will hurt you on defense. And having a high sensitivity will help you on defense, but it will probably hurt you a little bit on offense until you get used to it. So with the higher sensitivities, you can see how much more rapidly my control surfaces are deflecting. That helps me evade aircraft. It helps me perform abrupt maneuvers, recover from aggressive stalls. It helps me uh, juke and jive, you know what I mean, when I need to. So that is why I encourage trying to get your sensitivities as high as possible, but don't feel married to it. Now, we come in here to nonlinearity. Nonlinearity is a little different. A lot of people confuse these two things. I play on 3.5 nonlinearity for my rudder, but let's check it out what it looks like on one. So you see this red square and this green diamond here at the top of the screen. The red is my physical rudder axis in real life, and the green is my virtual rudder axis. That's what's actually being sent to the game. And you'll notice the higher I make this nonlinearity, the more desync those things become. And what you're doing is you're adjusting the curve. So a linear curve is a one for one ratio, meaning for, uh, if you're at one nonlinearity, 50% right rudder is 50% virtual right rudder. But as you hold that 50% right rudder and you increase nonlinearity, you'll notice that the green lags behind. But 100% is still 100% and 0% is still 0%. So you end up in the same destination, but the virtual paths, the, the virtual uh, rudder's path to get there is slower. So towards the outside, it has to catch up, it has to accelerate in order to meet it. So higher nonlinearity basically just gives you uh, more fine-tuning in these narrow ranges. So you see how precisely I can move my rudder in this narrow band, but how much more difficult it is to get, you know, a, a, solid, uh, a solid smoothness out of the outside. And that's the thing when it, when it comes to rudder is, in my school of thought, Rudder is one of those things where you either need a tiny little bit of it, a very precise amount, or you need the whole thing. And there's really not a lot of there's really not a lot of in between. The amount of times that you need seven percent rudder is a lot. The amount of times that you need seventy percent rudder is not that much. And if you have seventy percent rudder that's necessary, but you accidentally dial in eighty percent, the difference is going to be kind of negligible. But if you needed seven percent rudder and you accidentally dialed in 3% rudder, you may completely miss your shot altogether. So the margin of error towards the, you know, the center, the, the more precise, smaller deflection values is, is much, much wider um, in, in terms of like what can actually like screw you up. And towards the outside, it's like, you know what I mean? Like normally when I get to the outside of my rudder, I'm just jamming the thing all the way over. I'm like, I'm at 100%. Uh, but you'll notice that when I'm playing, and you'll hear this underneath my desk quite a bit. I'm going to pull up my, my rudder window for you here real quick. You'll hear this sound a lot underneath my desk, and that is me making little tiny, like, oh, just a little, just a little like that, just a little like that, oh, just a little like that, a little like that, and then you'll hear one big slam, and that's me going all the way off to one side. But when you see me dogfighting, you'll typically see this flashing across the screen, and that is my little feet, just like a little... Just like a little duck, my little feet are just going crazy under the desk. But I'm, I'm, but my virtual rudder is just doing this. It's just making tiny little deflections, and I'm in tune enough with my aircraft that that's what's keeping my pipper exactly where I want. That's what's making me miss that bush and that tree by just a hair. So anyway, guys, I hope that this helps clear up some things about nonlinearity and sensitivity. Gives you a good place to start from. As far as starting with nonlinearity, I recommend two for your pitch and your roll, and I recommend three for your yaw. I use 1.8 for pitch and roll, and I use 3.5 for yaw, but I change it all the time. I change it all the time, and I use 100% across the board for all the three other sensitivities. So play around with it. Go into test flight, try out some different settings, see what works for you, and again, start small, build your way up, work your way up to it, and if you notice your performance start to plateau, and you keep going up, and then you notice your performance start to fall, back it up to where you were plateaued at. And uh, just kind of park there on that plateau for a little while until maybe like, you know, a couple of weeks of flight time goes by, and then try to start rising it up again and see, and see how it feels. 
Uh, don't be married to any numbers. Don't worry too much about what other people's sensitivities are. We are all over the board. We all have different levels of dexterity. We all have different control columns. We all have different tensions in our springs. We all have, you know, different, uh, you know, perceptions of, of what is considered stable. So what works for me may not work for you. I hope that explains... I hope that explains it. I hope that helps. As always, fly safe, good hunting. Thank you guys for watching. Your support means the world. And I hope to. I look forward to sharing this guys with you sooner rather than later. Take care. 07.